welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Kate Zeinard. And I'm Meg Healy. Today on the podcast, we're talking about reducing your carbon footprint and how to sew more sustainably. Then we'll have a little fun with sewing would you rather. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we get started, let's have a little check-in. How are you guys doing? I'm back outside of the studio, back in Toronto, but how are things in Colorado? Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of knew the answer before I <laughs> Yeah, Meg already knows the answer to this. So after our last recording, when it was snowing, um, we had some lovely... 80-degree uh, weather, some really hot days. It was lovely, and it snowed again last night oh. because Colorado is special. So it is now May 21st, I believe, and uh-huh. uh, yes, we uh, have a whole bunch of broken branches here. Yes, we do. And we're cold. Yeah, I thought oh. for sure the last time, like, maybe we would get another dusting, but this was, like, a couple of inches. Yeah, this was this was pretty substantial. I was driving home last night, and I was actually kind of scared because the visibility was really bad. Um, so uh, we're so lucky, and Me- we're looking at Meg on the Skype, and she's wearing her uh, lime green short sleeves. It's a lovely yeah. day in Toronto, apparently. I know. It's a really good day today outside. I was just, just before we started recording, I went for a little walk, and it was... Yeah, it was great. So, so sorry, and I'm sorry sitting to here rub it in. in my flannel. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, I'm Kate's in her flannel, <laughs> scarves, mittens, <laughs> the full Beans. Beans. exactly. Amanda's Sa- huddled under her coat. Cardigan, cardigan, cardigan. Yeah. Oh, oh well. Well, I so, had my long. You guys had your long weekend next weekend, but Canada had their long weekend just last weekend. So I'm all refreshed and. And you had some nice. good weather for that. Go. Um, yeah, actually, um, a little rainy, but I mean, you can always, it, it always rains on a long weekend. Too, oh, okay. So it was fine. Well, fingers crossed yeah. for us that we'll have a nice long weekend. Yes, I, up. I'm, I'm sending all the vibes through this, through the, the recording. Send and us all the warm, <laughs> please. <laughs> Summer oh. will come eventually. I swear it will. Well, let's, let's jump right in. Um, we were really lucky to have Kate Ning of Time to Sew write a sustainable sewing mini series for Sew News this year. There were three installments, um, and we just finished that up. The series is awesome, um, and it covers a lot of ground from the Rana Plaza collapse and the ills of fast fashion to fabric sourcing and wardrobe um, wardrobe curation. So really coming at sustainable sewing from a lot of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So um, just as a starting place, I think that um, a lot of what Kate brought up in her series um, is really kind of thinking about slow fashion and and Mm -hmm. thinking about sewing in the same way. So it's almost like slow sewing. Um, And there are a lot, there are lots of pieces to that. Um, but it really spoke to me, you know, this point about not having sewing turn into be, become like a ready to wear habit. Totally turned fabric new pattern habit, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I always like. Yeah, I always like this quote. It's like, make it nice, not twice. So yeah. it's you know, yeah, That's I like, always love that. And it same goes with buy it nice, not twice. It's always kind of I like to shift that over into sewing as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think for me, I've seen that in my own kind of sewing Mm -hmm. habits. Like I have definitely been in periods of time where I am just like new, new, new has to be a new make has to, I need some new fabric. I need some new patterns and kind of, you know, realizing that that's, you know, is that any better than, you know, just buying lots and lots of clothes that you might not really need? Probably not. You know, it's still, on that materialistic impulse spectrum. Right. And using up a lot of material, more material than you probably need to. Right, right. So um, so I really loved that point. Um, also something that I think I have room for improvement is just um, really slowing down and enjoying the process. <laughs> I, Amanda, yeah, who right. makes her makes in a day. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, and I think that um, it's just really it's it can be hard to do that. And I mean, I I think 
I don't tend to sew things that are super complicated because I don't think tend to wear things that are super complicated. Mm-hmm. But there's still a lot of kind of simple joy in that process. Um, and we've also talked a little bit about how that kind of ties in with, you know, I mean, really sewing as a process being beneficial to your mental health. Mm-hmm. Probably right. more than like the finished product. You know, it's, yeah. it's the process that is so beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I get it. I just, I'm not very good at it. This mm-hmm. year, I feel like I'm improving a little bit on on that, um, mostly because I've been sewing a lot of Berta style patterns this year so far. And Meg's um, <laughs> making, she makes got this big, bright smile on her face. Um, yeah. But it, I mean, it comes down to uh, the bird style patterns tend to be more complicated than most of the things that I sew. Um, for example, uh, a couple of days ago, I was working on a blouse and I could not quite figure out how the yoke was supposed to go together. And I ended up having to put it on a dress form and put the pieces together like a puzzle. Um, in 3D before I could figure out where I was supposed to be sewing what. (laughs) And, you know, that took a little extra time. It took a little extra concentration. And that's something that Berta makes me do because it's not just the same same straight dart and the same um, shoulder seams and everything. You have to stop and you have to practice the curved dart or whatever in Mm -hmm. order to make sure that you can do it well. Um, So... Yeah, I have to say, Berta Styles helping me sew a little bit more slowly and mindfully. I love that. Maybe someday. Um, Maybe someday. That can be a goal for me. You know, I thought I picked a perfectly simple pattern until Sometimes I could not happens. figure out how it Oh, I know. Together. And then you look at the actual pattern pieces, and then you're like, wow, what is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're like, I'm sure I'll figure out how these go together eventually. And then you've got a big loop because you've already sewn your lower side seams. But And it, the thing is that in this particular pattern, the sleeves and the yokes were one piece. So, and there was a front oh, and a okay, back, yeah, and then yes. the, yep. and then the shoulder seam was all the way down the sleeves. And the, the shoulder, it's the they have like a shoulder notch, but the actual seam is the yoke kind of seam in the front. Yeah, yeah, and they, I yeah. just yeah, yeah, I was like, I don't, I I can't quite figure out. They're like stitch the front yoke seam. I'm like, great, <laughs> which one is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen that meme, but it's a woman looking frustrated, and it and it says, I'm. On week two of a two-hour pattern. Oh, gosh, yeah. (laughs) I feel like that sometimes happens like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Thinking, stepping back to a little bit, um, I really loved the part of the series that talks about um, kind of wardrobe considerations. And I think that's Mm -hmm. a part of the conversation that, you know, it's, um, I think it's gaining ground and and it's um, really out there for fashion bloggers and um, fashion influencers. I think they're talking about it, and I I think that sewing is starting to talk about it too. But um, kind of three approaches. Um, One is curation. So that is really about knowing what you like so that you sew stuff you will actually wear, Mm -hmm. which I feel like – over the years, that is something that I've gotten better at. Right. Um, but mm-hmm. I think it takes a long time to learn that when you first start sewing. I agree. Um, I can think of several yeah. things that I sewed that I love the way they look on the pattern envelope. And then when I put them on me, they are uncomfortable or I don't like the way they look. And I'm, I've am i pretty much learned not to do that anymore. I can usually look at a pattern now and mm-hmm. see if it's something that I'm going to feel good in. Um, enough I, I love a good surprise it. too for me I, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I get it but <laughs> sometimes it's if I'm iffy about something that I end up like really loving it or I guess yeah I don't know I know I think you still have sometimes. to kind of step outside of that too oh, sure. and surprise yeah. yourself and but I think <clears throat> you know when you're really thinking about building up your wardrobe making sure those core pieces are things that are going to get a lot of wear yeah mm-hmm. no totally yeah. so um the other thing that I really loved is something that we've talked a lot about on the So News side is um, the capsule wardrobe. Mm-hmm. So really kind of putting together, you know, there's all these kind of Instagram challenges, but it's basically putting together a number of pieces that are that go together, are interchangeable, mm-hmm. 
you can make a bazillion outfits and combinations out of. Um, Mm -hmm. And that really speaks to me because you guys know how I feel about basics. Um, But I don't know. I know, Kate, you're working on a travel-focused capsule wardrobe. I am. And I think... I. I mean, I love that. I think it makes a ton of sense for travel. Yeah, I think it's going to be great for travel and in general for that time of year, for fall and probably spring as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because, again, I'll just be able to reuse all of those when I'm not mm-hmm. in Vienna. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Meg, have you done mm-hmm. a lot of work with capsule wardrobe stuff? Well, actually, I just started one this year with my mashups. I kind of have an outline that I already outlined one garment that I need so I need 12 in total so I have like one tank one long sleeve top one blouse and for each of my monthly mashups I kind of fit in one to the puzzle so I'm kind of I guess yeah, what month is it I guess I'm like a third of the way th- are we a third of the way through 2019 I think no we're we more oh, yeah almost more. halfway no no <laughs> right that's yes. crazy it's oh my gosh month. that is Hey, that is crazy. Yes. And yeah, so that's actually been really fun for me. So now when I go, when I'm taking my consideration for a mashup, it's not just like 12 standalone pieces. I'm making sure that they mix and match complementary fabrics. I have like a fabric swatch plan and color palette. And so that's actually been really fun and a challenge. I haven't done that before in for my past year or so. I'm actually wearing the pants right now that I made for my, um, what was it? My... Uh, Oh, there's just been so many months so far in 2000. Oh, yeah, my February one. Uh, yeah, so, and I can wear it all different ways. So. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, a so neat, a neat way that. to spend a year mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then I can, you know, keep, and I'm kind of intermixing, like, pieces that are more summer or summer mm-hmm. fall or summer, like, all season. So, and of course, like, the key color is green. So. Of course. Right, so, right. Of course. It's, like, <laughs> basically green, black, and white. <laughs> and nice. That sounds really pretty. Yeah. I have done um, some work with capsules, and we did a workwear capsule for So News a while ago. I will say that I I, I think it was last summer I was going to do the 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge where you pick 10 garments um, and you wear them over the course of 10 days and you kind of show different combinations and it's supposed to kind of get you out of your – you know, regular thinking about how you dress and and thinking about making each of those kind of core pieces work for you in lots of different ways. And I lasted three days because (laughs) I was just so I was bored. But Mm. I mean, I loved the spirit of it. I just couldn't personally commit. I I have to say, however, I'm going to somewhat challenge the sustainability of that because how much laundry do you have to do if you're wearing the same 10 things? Well, I think that's up to the person. All right. I think that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. But I have to say, for me personally, I couldn't, I'd could. i have to do laundry like six times yeah. over the course of those 10 days. And, um, okay, that might be exaggerating a little bit. I'd probably have to do laundry, <laughs> oh, three or four times. But then, you know, that's a lot of water you're wasting for a couple of pieces of clothing. Right. But maybe less water on the front end for, like, producing those pieces of clothing. So I think that's another good point that we'll get to later, kind of what are the parameters for something being sustainable? Because I think that's Mm -hmm. really open to interpretation. Um, One other thing, just a quick point to mention that I loved about kind of the wardrobe considerations was kind of a focus on accessorizing, which is, I mean, I need... I need lots of help here, but basically the idea is wear your things in in lots of different ways because you're styling them in different ways, and right. I think that's yeah. kind of an underutilized strategy as well, but again, I'm not great at accessorizing all the time. <laughs> and see, me, I'm like, I don't care. I'll just wear the same six outfits, and I don't care if you know I'm wearing the same six <laughs> outfits all winter long. You're not <laughs> You're not going to be fooled by a fancy necklace. That's it's all true. I'm saying. It's true. <laughs> Okay, you're, you're a yeah, cat. T- I don't even notice the cats anymore. You have that statement necklace. On. I, know. Right? I know. I'm wearing my cat print flannel at the moment because I love it's that cold. Shirt. It is cold. <laughs> yeah. I know as soon as I saw it come on, I'm like, that doesn't look like it's summer over there, which you're wearing. It's not. It's not. The first clue is Kate wearing flannel. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, all right. Well, let's let's do jump in to a little talk about the fabric considerations because it mm-hmm. it's not the only consideration, but I think it's an important one. Um, and this one's going to be hard, you guys, because it's a really good point to make clothes that last with the best quality fabric you can afford. Exactly. So yeah. again, you know, make it make it one time, but make it with good quality fabric. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's going to last, use good construction techniques. But then, you know, there's cheap fabric. I love cheap fabric, Amanda. Mm -hmm. I know. It's hard. Um, And and it is, you know, it's it's part of, you know, is sewing um, financially accessible? And does it make sense Mm -hmm. anymore, you know, when it really comes down to it? But I think you have to compare that to kind of the long term, you know, strong linen um, shirt that's going to last for a really long time. And also, and kind of style-wise, you know, if it's not something that's so trend-based that's going to feel dated in a season or two. Right. um, Mm -hmm. If you spend $50 on fabric for a shirt that lasts as long as five ten dollars $10 ready-to-wear shirts, then, you know, at that point you're breaking even. But, you know, there's also the trend situation right, and the right. pride of that. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you're breaking even financially, not necessarily philosophically. Right, right. Right. And I don't think, I think it's just a, this is a consideration. So I think it's, you know, something yeah. to think about. It's not, you know, the one way. Um, <clears throat> and then I think when it comes down to fabric selection, kind of just being educated about what's out there. Um you know, trying, I, I don't know, do you guys, have you thrifted a lot of fabric? Oh, I used to, but I, ju- I just don't, I just don't anymore. I used to thrift a lot. I used to, I, I think that was more when I started out sewing and so just kind of experimenting. Mm-hmm. My mom Muslim, used to get me yeah. um, like bed sheets and stuff mm-hmm. that I would use as fabric for, you know, making little things when I was little. Uh, so I haven't really delved into thrifting fabric now because I'm I much rather the thrift store is just as close as like I, I walk to all my local fabric stores and that's something that I like to do. Um, but yeah, so no, I I should though. I think that'd be fun mm-hmm. to see see what's there. Yeah, I'm with Meg. I uh, I've thrifted a little bit of fabric at a um, sort of craft resale shop uh, that's up in Fort Collins, but I haven't actually used it for anything yet. So I need to get that on my list and. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to do more of it because, mm-hmm. yeah, thrifting fabric is good for the environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I—I mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of love it. I w- was l- getting really lucky there for a while, which I think has dried out because I think I told too many people about the awesome place. Oh yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> I did it, and so yeah, now there's no more thrifted fabric for me. But I loved it because you know it was not only kind of reusing. Using something that um, you know might otherwise end up getting sent to the landfill, but also just kind of like taking someone else's craft supply that they had plans for and they yeah. never got around to it, and then you're kind mm-hmm. of giving it new life. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've donated a lot of fabric before. Sometimes I go through all my stash and then I just I bring it to a local um, thrift store. And so nice. So you're on one the other end. Vision. I will. <laughs> huh? You're on the other end of the thrifting fabric. I'm on the other. So one day I hope to like walk walk down the street, be like, Hey, I know where you got that fabric because my fabric is not just the ones that I donate are not kind of basic fabric yeah <laughs> i'm sure they've got some challenge up, fabrics in there yeah <laughs> yeah but going back even to um just before i lose this um point we were talking about like sewing with you know nicer quality fabrics having things last once you start d- doing that and then you go back to sewing and wearing something in a cheap fabric like, you notice it's just like uncomfortable and like sometimes harder to sew even right. and so it's hard to mm-hmm. kind of go back to that once you spend a little bit more on fabric and wear kind of nicer quality fabrics it's hard to go back you're like you know so once you kind of dabble in it for me it was hard to go back to like a cheap fabric well maybe that helps encourage you to do the yeah uh, the better uh you know, sew it once in the better exactly, fabric. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, another really great fabric option in terms of sustainability is dead stock fabric. And so that's basically um, a designer 
a clothing designer has ordered a bunch of fabric to create oh, their yeah. line, and then there's a mm-hmm. bunch of leftover. And I, oh. I feel like a lot of online um, fabric stores, in particular, carry these, and I have purchased a few. Um, but I don't think I did that thinking about kind of the sustainability factor. So, mm-hmm. um, but it does seem like I, I am seeing a lot more kind of designer dead stock yeah. fabric options out there, which is exciting. Yeah, wow. and that's uh, that's a an option where it's not precisely thrifted, it's not precisely reused, but it's something that exists in the world and would go to the landfill if somebody doesn't take it and do something awesome right. with it. So exactly, it already mm-hmm. exists. You're not adding to the demand basically right. for it. Yeah. Yeah, when I used to live in New York, Mood would always ha- yeah. carry those those fabrics and oh, they were so beautiful. And it's just so cool to, you know, they designed that fabric to go in their collection and then now you can buy it's for me that w- I didn't yeah, you that's a great point that it, that it is sustainable, but I just from the fashion perspective, I <laughs> I loved that fabric. Mm-hmm. That was always great. You're like basically I'm wearing something by, you know, Yeah, exactly. Mark Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's really Now I want to go yeah. find some dead stock fabric yeah yeah <laughs> yeah oh i'll have to make it that reminds me on our mini moon to new york definitely need to make a trip there yes. yeah for sure get some mm-hmm. bring me back some dead stock yeah i'll bring back <laughs> bring back some for all of you <laughs> if there's a one with a cat print especially yes okay, definitely I'll grab that for you <laughs> i mean always me and cat prints um and then i would say i i, I don't want to kind of dive into all the logistics but Kate presented a really great um, kind of rundown of the different types of fabrics, how they are sustainable or not, and kind of what really makes a sustainable fabric. And I will say that it is really, um, there's it's not as clear waters as you would think it would be. I no, mean, there's a lot of a lot of factors and different kind of governing bodies who value different pieces of the sustainability um, puzzle in different ways. Yeah, and it it, it kind of comes down to everything that you can find has some benefit. No, well, not everything you can find has some benefit. A lot of things that you find have some benefit, but they also have detriments. Mm-hmm. You know, like organic cotton, that's fantastic. It's it's better for the environment. It doesn't have all the chemicals, but it still is processed the same as cotton, so it still has all of the um, problems with the with the processing. And um, you have like soy uh, soy silk, mm-hmm. which I think is really cool. It takes um, it, it takes the waste left over from processing soy products like tofu and stuff, and it weaves that into a fabric. I've never gotten my hands on some. I desperately want to. If anybody knows a way I can actually do that, let me know because I want to try this stuff out. Um, and that's great, but again, there's certain chemicals that are involved in that process, taking those strands and extruding them and making them into something that you can have a steady piece of fabric out of. It requires certain chemicals. And so, you know, I haven't actually looked over that um, <laughs> that blog post for a while, so I don't remember all of the details. But, you know, it's like everything that you find in some way, it's good. But in another way, the processing ba- is bad or the manufacturing is bad or they still dye it with the with the dyes that are not great for the earth or something like that. So it's it's always kind of a balance, a give and take. Um, you kind of have to decide what's most important to you. Um, if it's the sustainability, if it's the um, where the fiber is coming from, if it's the manufacturing processes, and figure out what the least harmful is. Um, I actually have a dress that I have that I made out of a fabric that was 50% um, polyester made from recycled plastic bottles. Oh, yeah. I've sewn with a fabric that before. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, I, I actually yeah. really like the fabric. It's super nice. And um, it always makes me feel a little happy when I'm wearing it because I know that, you know, it's helping get – get those bottles off the earth. I mean, Mm -hmm. instead of them Mm -hmm. floating in the ocean somewhere, they have been turned into my dress. That is cute. Yeah. Well, actually, you know how we do these free sew-alongs on um, Berta? One of the first ones, I did a denim jacket, and the fabric sponsor was this Thread International, and their denims were made 
um, from plastic bottles, uh, and they were it was really cool. So I got to sew with that as one of the samples, and that was really great. In fact, the uh, fabric I had was also from Thread International. Well, there we uh, go. Which I think I heard about when we were talking about that for so long. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Last time I looked at them, they were selling products and not fabric, so I'm a little sorry about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, do they not sell fabrics anymore? I wonder. Yeah, because this was like three, two years ago that that I did that. That's so long. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't. Mm-hmm. I haven't looked in a while. But last time I looked, they were they were selling like backpacks or something that I'm sure were made mm-hmm. out of that okay. kind of fabric. But they weren't selling yardage. Yeah. Um, maybe oh, I'm okay. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do have yardage now. Um, we'll have to yeah, check it out. I haven't looked into it uh, recently, so maybe I should. And we can. Well, we'll report back. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I will also make sure there's a link in the show notes page to the blog post that kind of discusses the ins and outs of those um, different kinds of fabrics so that because mm-hmm. I think it is really you have to kind of make that personal decision. Mm-hmm. And it totally. also depends on the product or the project, because if um, and, and kind of what fabric is going to last the longest and kind of serve exactly. the kind of project that you're making the best and which one are you going to wear the most right. you know if it's right. if it's recycled but yeah. it's not particularly soft against your skin and if you're not going to mm-hmm. wear exactly, exactly. and then, then you, yeah. it kind of cancels each other out right. so um, well and it comes down to in the end unless you are growing your own cotton or flax and, or growing your own sheep or raising your own sheep and taking that fiber yourself and weaving it into something somewhere in the chain there's something unsustainable yeah right exactly there's there's no perfect answer unless you're actually making it yourself from scratch right and i i really i think that that was kind of that's core to this to this subject matter and it's all about you know considering these various perspectives Mm -hmm. that kind of come together um, on this subject and maybe just making small steps in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. and sometimes so. that's all you mm-hmm. can do. But, yeah. but if you're making small steps, then that's better than making no steps. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Thanks, you guys. That was, um, I think it's a great, mm-hmm. it's a great piece of the kind of sewing yeah. landscape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, and one way I like to not you know like help the process and be more sustainable is for me it's the choice not to buy fabric online not spending that money on the transport of the Mm -hmm. fabric and I always you know walk to the I never ever buy fabric online so that's what I think I I like to contribute to at least my um my sustainable sewing practice here just I know not everyone has that luxury but since it's a for me, it's it's what I like to do, and then it gets me outside. And yeah, that's a know, great point for everyone. Yeah. And if it works yeah. for you, that's that's great. Totally. So I just wanted, to, if anyone has in the same, if anyone has like a fabric store near them, why don't you try just for a period of time for your next projects, to just going to your local fabric store instead of the shipping and everything for fabric online. So mm-hmm. just wanted to get that suggestion out there. Yep, that's a good point. I'm about to have a fabric store. Within a mile of my house. Ooh, oh, nice. And I'm very verklumped. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> I don't, what is that word? It mean? just, I'm, I, um, I don't know how to feel. And oh. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> and um, because it just seems dangerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's, I, there's still we'll steps see. to be made for sure. I believe in you, Amanda. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> So everyone loves a good game of Would You Rather, but today let's lighten things up a bit by doing one all about sewing. So Sounds like fun. I've, I know, yeah, we, we, I just love to do like these kind of games and I just thought, I, when I was little, I, we always used to do the Would You Rather and some, you know, the gross ones, like, <laughs> would you rather like eat a, eat a worm or like just, uh, so much fun. <laughs> but these ones are, I, uh, these ones are kind of hard, some of them. Yes. And, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we've glanced oh, over I them, know. but I haven't uh, made any decisions about a lot of you them. Made so no. <laughs> oh, great. So the way it's going to work, I'm going to ask um, the question because in, in the past, when we try and alternate, sometimes we get a little confused. <laughs> I remember the one time I was like, wait, it's my turn. No. So we just thought, I'll ask them, you two answer, then I'll answer, and we'll discuss as needed if there's like a big debate going on here. So, first, would you rather win your dream sewing machine? Or sewing studio makeover. 
Mm, that one's actually kind of easy for me because I already own my dream machine. So I would rather win the studio makeover, which is desperately needed in my house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> desperately. I would take a studio makeover if lots of fabric was included. Because I'm pretty happy. <laughs> oh, I'm happy with my machines. I'm okay with my space. Just send me fabric. Yeah. You just want fabric? Yeah. <laughs> Amanda, the rules oh. do not say you can come up with option three. Oh, that's just my style, that though. Just, that just ruins the entire game. Okay. <laughs> studio makeover. <laughs> I think I would have to go with sewing studio makeover as well. Yeah, because I have I have the machine that I would, um, that I love my big industrial surgery. We have a love-hate relationship. You know, one time you rip my fingernail oh. off, but you, you've made up for it all the... <laughs> Yeah, industrial <laughs> surgers. They're amazing. Okay. Next one. Would you rather never use interfacing or lining in future projects forever again? Ooh. I I use interfacing a lot more than I use lining. So yeah. I think I would go with I'd rather not use lining, though I can okay. see situations where I would deeply, deeply regret that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, same here. Lining. Mhm. I think I'm I'm the same. I'm lining too actually. I don't really make too many things that are lined, but yeah, I it's a give or take. Yeah, there's would be those couple projects that you're like, "Oh, wish I had some lining." Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in my white um wedding outfit. Yes, might you, might <laughs> yeah, you might need some. might need Or just I'll need to need to uh, choose the appropriate undergarments. Don't I won't save my something blue for my underwear <laughs> <laughs> unless it's really really pale. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Would you rather always have to use zippers as an enclosure or button and buttonholes for forever going projects? Mm, zipper. You would rather use a zipper? I do not like buttonholes. I find them irritating. I would rather use a zipper any day. I'm definitely buttonholes. I like buttons. Oh, yeah. We finally came up with yeah. different answers. I, I love buttons. I mean, I, and buttonholes don't really scare me on my machine. I figured out mm. how to do them. No, and I mean, I can do them. I just don't like doing them. Yeah. I mean, they definitely, every once in a while, make you sweat a little bit mm -hmm. and swear. Yeah. But Especially since it's the last step. Right. Like, I, I definitely get sweaty palms when I'm putting in that. Final button. It's so hard to rip out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I love a zipper, so I'm... I'll use zippers um, for the rest of my life on sewing projects. So would you rather, next one, have to sew a custom garment for your least favorite person or have your favorite handmade garment ruined? That is so hard. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say I think I'd rather have my favorite hand sewn garment ruined because I think think whatever it is and I don't know off the top of my head I, I've, I'm thinking about a couple of options whatever they are I know I can remake it if I need to yep so oh that's true uh, I didn't even think about well, what if you could never remake it it's the gone. pattern doesn't it's exist gone. anymore the pattern doesn't exist the it just yeah uh, that might change my answer um I don't know I mean I have sewn Next for some. One. Who's your least favorite person? No, I, I mean, I worked. In, I, I worked in the theater. I've sewn for some heinous people. <laughs> I mean, oh right, eh? I have. I have. I've had to dress people who I would not spit on if they were on fire. <laughs> so, oh, I can pro okay, I'm probably exaggerating. I probably would have, but I mean, I probably would have spit on her if she was on fire. <laughs> but oh, um, so yeah, okay, fine. If I can never use the pattern again, I think I would make a custom garment for my least favorite person. I think I could handle it. I'd still, yeah. I would, I would still go with favorite handmade garment ruined because then you can, maybe you can't make that exact thing, but you can just sew something else that would, I just mm -hmm. feel like it would still be more enjoyable than spending mm -hmm. your time on somebody who's not pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> I think my answer would be, I would rather sew yeah, like a custom garment for my least favorite person because I'm going to just sew them something really unflattering. Yeah. It's custom, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize we got to sew it from our perspective. 
Oh, like yeah, we got to do that. I thought I'd have to do what she wanted me to do. Oh, oh no, yeah, no, I yeah, totally oh, I want know. to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of there's lots of um, different uh, perspectives to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Keep changing the rules on me, okay. Meg. Okay, next one. Uh, would you rather always have to use dull scissors or pins? Dull pins for me. Pins. Because scissors just... I I use dull pins because I was like, oh, I this pin is dull. I could throw it away or I could just keep using it. Yeah. Um, whereas dull scissors make me want to die. Yeah. Way more well, annoying. I'd rather use dull scissors. Because, yeah, if, like, all of your pins were... I can't stand a dull pin. Like, just, like shoving it in there I just like I can't do it where tall scissors I don't know I don't use scissors that much so. yeah I thought about that too yeah. I use a rotary cutter a lot that's but true, but that feels like cheating yeah I I need some new pins do that's you? it yeah I need some pins are something that it's like socks in your wardrobe yeah. it's annoying to it's not fun to buy but once you do it's great yeah <laughs> you know I just uh, I just make sure they're on my Christmas list every year and then I get oh that's a good idea I get new cute pins for uh for Christmas or my birthday every year and then I just have an odd a growing collection of pins because I keep not throwing away the dull ones I'm gonna start. Oh, I'm gonna start. Go. I'm gonna start throwing my dull pins when I find them. I promise. I make this <laughs> vow here and now in front of you and all of our listeners. I will start throwing away my dull pins, even if they're pretty. There you go. <laughs> all right. Would you rather get to spend a hundred dollars on fabric or shoes? So you've like won. You you're, you're given a hundred dollars. Would you rather spend it on fabric or shoes? This pretty much happens to me on my birthday every year oh, right. and it is literally either fabric or this shoes is reality like oh yeah. yeah it's one year it's fabric and usually fabric wins out um oh yeah but it might be shoes this year i think it depends on whether i need new shoes like i desperately need <laughs> new sandals and i just bought a pair that cost approximately hundred dollars because i'm going to wear them for like four years before they get disgusting yeah. And um, they arrived yesterday. The package was covered in snow. I haven't even opened them. <laughs> I know. When will you get to wear them? I know. So um, so if I need those shoes, then shoes. If I don't need new shoes at that moment, um, I probably am going to go for the fabric because I tend mm -hmm. to wear all of three pairs of shoes on a regular basis. And uh, I'm just not a big... I, I mean, I have so many shoes and I love shoes, but... I don't actually wear them, so mm -hmm. yeah. I would any every time I would always spend money on shoes because I have have so much fabric. I don't really, you know, need more fabric, but I'll. I just love shoes. So I much, like so that. I would makes in my answers were basically the exact same answer, but with the opposite <laughs> <laughs> end result. I, I have so many shoes. I just don't need any more, so I'd buy fabric. Well, I have me, so I, I much fabric. <laughs> Yeah, if I can't, I, since I can't make shoes, I love because then I don't feel like guilty, guilty buying shoes. Um, okay, would you rather have someone judge your sewing construction skills or design aesthetic for a garment that you've made? Like if they're like, oh, it's not sewn well, or like I can't believe you thought that was like a good fabric to choose. Like what are what you know so. What would you rather? As I sit here in my cat print flannel shirt, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to say that I decided a long time ago I don't care what people think about my fashion because there you go. I just don't have f good fashion sense and I know it and that's fine. Um, so I would rather have them judging my fashion sense rather than my construction. Mm -hmm. I would rather have them judge my construction skills than my design aesthetic because... I don't know. You can always sew something better next time, but I don't know. The I like the that. aesthetic thing just seems like a judgment about me personally, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, there is definitely a part of me that doesn't care, but um, I don't know. I just, I, I yeah, construction skills. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a hard one for me. I think I would rather have them judge my design aesthetic because then I can really I can back it up I can have you know 
some you know trends to back it up some you know reporting it, but if they're like oh this wasn't Stonewall it's like uh I just would make me feel bad <laughs> <laughs> that would be my thing okay would you rather have to rethread your serger every day or wind your bobbin every three seams <gasps> oh gosh ah oh my <laughs> gosh when I printed this out, that second half wasn't there. I didn't know it. <laughs> I know. I, I added some and I finished that because I was trying to think of like a just an equal one, but a different. I know I, I in like the five minutes before we started recording, I added some extras and finished that sentence. <laughs> oh, my God. I would rethread serger. It actually doesn't bother Ooh. me that much. I think I've just had to do it. Like the whole serger. Like it, this is not like a tie on thread and loop through. This is like a complete... Oh. Like this is not a knot through and Paul. This is oh you're no holes are threaded. Well, I just got an air threaded serger. So oh, well. that helps a lot. La so, <laughs> no, um but yeah, I'd rather and if it was every day, if it's just once a day, great. But if I'm gonna have to sit there and sew for a while and stop every three seams to wind a bobbin, yeah. like I'd rather get a little bit of flow going. Um, oh, okay. And I agree with Manda for just that reason. Um, ha- I mean, as irritating it was a, as it would be to thread a serger once a day, at least it would be once a day as yeah. opposed to every three seams, oh, which would true. be like every five minutes. Yeah. So, that's yeah, I think, I, I think I'd pick serger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I hate threading my serger. I really do. Oh, me too. So maybe I'll do a wind the bo- Yeah. So I would maybe do... Why my bobbin? I just make those three seams really long and count. <laughs> make them count. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I oh, I hate threading my serger. Ooh, when when a thread breaks, I mean, I'm done for the day. I just I leave. I, I know. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I I try twice, and if it doesn't if it doesn't start working again after my second try to rethread, I just turn around and oh. walk away. Yeah, just take a break. Yeah, it's not walk going away. up from there. <laughs> yeah, it knows. Okay. The serger knows. It knows. So would you rather always have to use contrasting thread to your fabric or contrasting like Notion so you could never use a matching zipper or buttons? So you always have to use either contrasting thread or contrasting Contrasting Notions. notions because mm-hmm. it would be less obvious when I made mistakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. The thread's going to be really obvious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think so. Amanda, you would go with you would rather use notions, contrasting yeah, notions. Yeah, yeah. I th- yeah, I think I'd rather use contrasting thread. I don't know. I I I tend to sometimes do that a lot anyway, and I like the aesthetic of that. And you know, I have perfect sewing. So <laughs> but I use oh, man, a ton so of, of invisible zippers, and the thought of. On an off invisible zipper because sometimes like they are invisible to a certain right. point, but sometimes there's that little bit and that would just drive you crazy. Me, so, yeah, yeah, like the uh, like the zipper pull part. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, right, that pull. Yeah. Anyways, so I'd rather use contrasting thread. Okay. Would you rather sew through your finger with a sewing machine or get a really bad cut from a sharp rotary cutter? Like a deep Ugh, cut. rotary like cutter, a, because those there's sharp. something very, very disconcerting about about a needle through my finger, and I've I've cut myself on rotary cutters before, yeah. and it's very, very irritating, and I hate it. Oh. But somehow the thought of having the needle through my finger is worse. So rotary cutter. I would do. I would rather sew through my finger. But yeah. honestly, either I'm, way, I'm, I'm going to faint. Yep. So yeah. Amanda's got a thing. I'm a fainter. And the rotary cutter just seems, I don't know. Oh, like a, sl- like the, a slash as opposed to like a poke Yeah, through. the slash and like ro- potential like, skin flap just, oh, a, I can't oh, have it. I can't, I can't oh, handle that. It. Would, For the record, yeah. though, it is much easier to clean out a slash than a puncture. Yeah. Oh. So 
for disinfecting purposes, the rotary cutter is better. Either way, I'm on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I think it's just easier for me to wrap up a finger where then a rotary cutter, I feel like it's Ugh. like in the hand situation or like, oh, I just. We got to talk about something else. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, I'm starting to get dizzy blind. over here. <laughs> Moving on. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather not sew for an entire month or not see anyone socially for an entire month? Hi, I'm an introvert. Please make the people go away and let me sew. <laughs> I know if it was if it, if it was see no dogs, you know, it might be oh, like a harder yeah. uh, decision for me. But um yeah, I don't know actually. That's a tough call. No, it's not for you. Not at all. Not for I don't Kate. know if I... Kate's like, this is... What? This is my dream I know. <laughs> Do you promise I don't have to see anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess... I guess not so for an entire month. Sorry. No, I guess I would mm-hmm. rather not see anyone socially. Yeah. No. And get some sewing time in. Because I still have to oh. be, like, well-balanced for my children. Like, I will still get mm. to see them a lot. So, mm-hmm. there's that. Oh, right. I would rather not sew for an I would just take a month off sewing, get some ideas, yeah. hang out with my, you know, people I haven't seen in a while. So, I would rather not sew for an entire month. And then wear all the things that I have so sewn. So true. Mm-hmm. So, that's, that's what I would rather and do. And that works if you like okay. people. <laughs> exactly. Okay. This is the last one. Would you rather sew with chiffon or minky for the rest of your life. Oh my gosh. I'm having a lot of trouble <laughs> with this one. And I'm trying to come up with with a reason to go with either or. I know. I think I'd mm. just quit sewing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So chiffon is prettier and like for actual like purposes of sewing, I'd probably rather sew with a chiffon. But then I think how much my cats like Minky, and then I feel like I can't really say no more Minky because it makes them so happy. So Aww. maybe I go for Minky. I oh, would have to go with chiffon, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I feel because I feel like you could. It, there's more variety to it, mm-hmm. maybe, and yes. you know, there's yeah. the shears, and then like. You know, maybe yeah. you just get a little bit more yeah. variety and I mean, mileage yeah. out of it. Yeah, the, for me, they're both, I was trying to think of fabrics that they're both kind of terrible to cut and sew. Like, they're not, like, kind of relaxing right. fabrics to, mm-hmm. to work with. But, yeah, I would sew with chiffon, chiffon, even though I hate sewing with it. But I do love an end result. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. the but thing. Maybe, yeah. When you get the exactly. chiffon, once you get it sewn, then you're like, I have yeah. this chiffon thing and it's so awesome. Which is how yeah. my cats feel about Minky. Oh, so there you go. Yeah, I just hate when I cut Minky. It's like I'm sneezing I know. with Minky dust mm-hmm. for like a day. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent somebody, I had to embroider something and send the uh, contributor back to the rest of the project to finish up and somebody had been cutting Minky in our room right before I did that and so I had to write her a note saying sorry about all the purple fuzz someone is cutting Minky <laughs> I hope she gets it off all right well that was I think so that was fun. my last question that was so much fun that was fun I love doing mm-hmm. those so <laughs> we I think we'll, should we post all them to the the show notes yeah page if yeah definitely to, like, play along yeah or? And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, feel free to give us your answers because we'd like to hear what you'd rather do. Mm-hmm. We would. Do you want that sewing machine in the finger? Or the- <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> Bringing that back. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll okay. stop. I'll stop. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our Sojo segment. The Sojo is what is giving us our current sewing mojo, what's getting us excited and mm-hmm. ex- inspired at the moment. Meg, why don't you start us off? What's your Sojo today? Well, my sojo is, is this this is going to be very not on brand for me, uh, but I'm going to make my dear friend, um, one of my oldest and best friend, she just had a baby boy Aww. on Sunday, and I promised her I'd make her a little like baby blanket with the embroidered name nice. on it. Nice. So that's my Sweet. sojo. Yeah, and I'm seeing her the next couple weeks, so that's my sojo. It's, yeah. Awesome. But um, also- so, uh, I'll be cutting minky. Woo. 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 <laughs> but also, Meg, when are you starting your wedding dress? <laughs> oh, I think, okay, I'm going to start it in 
probably June. I'm going to start it in June. Right. June 1st is when I'm going to print out the All patterns. Right. I'm yeah. going to keep checking in with you because I know Mimi G's yeah. out there somewhere getting really tense. I know. Well, I see. She's making she, her her wedding is from now. It's in like a couple of weeks, and she's still working on her. She's making a second dress, and she's still working on it. So she can do it. I can okay. do it. Okay. She's sewing up to that. She's and she even draped it. The whole um, the pattern and everything. I was following her process. So I'm gonna start it in June. I just want to be. There's a couple things I need to some projects. I know I'm working on something. Um, this fun project for so news with you yep. Amanda and I just want to get all the all the projects out my deadlines and then so I can just like really focus on that all right. so and I think me focus on something I can really get it done fast, okay so. that makes yeah. sense all right yeah. <laughs> how about you Amanda what's your sojo oh man I don't know but I have been thrown for a loop by this weather and I feel like normally this time of year oh, yeah. I am ready to sew all the summer things and Aww, it's yeah. just I don't know I don't know what month it is I don't you know it's just <laughs> kind of disorienting um so I don't I don't even know if I have one this week guys that's okay I'm sorry Aww, sometimes it's okay. okay not to have a sojo. understandable yeah I just feel scattered yeah. and um yeah but so come on sunshine and warm weather and yeah. Amanda inspiration yes yeah. all right for me Um, Well, we are uh, just a couple weeks out from the 1st of June, which was when we have obligated ourselves to sew something for our significant others. Meg is fine. She's already done it. And I don't know about Amanda, but uh, I am cutting it real close, you guys. (laughs) I got Uh the fabric in this weekend. I cut it last night. So um, as soon as I have time to change the thread on my serger and sit down for, I don't know, two hours, which hopefully will be on Sunday, I will get this sucker done. And that is my sojo. Except my husband asked me this morning if I could make it into a turtleneck instead of a T-shirt. and I Because it's snowing. Uh And I laughed and I said, well... I've already cut it, so no. But if you really want one, he's like, eh, the weather's not going to last that long. I'm like, you're right. It's nope. not. And then we moved on. Just make him a, a dickie. <laughs> <Make him a dickie. laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's it. I will make him a t-shirt Please and a dickie. Do. <laughs> For me. I mean, that that look is just... Some, it's a look. I'm picturing it right now. It's Yeah. It's, it'll well, be you great. know, I did actually... <laughs> I feel really stupid, actually, because I bought uh, some rib knit to make the uh, neckband on this t-shirt. And but the mm-hmm. the place only sold it by yards, and so I have a yard of this fabric, and I literally cut out yeah. a neckband that was like an inch and a half wide by, I don't know, a foot long or something like that. So I have an awful lot of rib knit that I could make him a dicky out of. Oh, <laughs> perfect! Yeah, you should <laughs> done. All right, Mark. I hope you're ready for your dicky, because <laughs> he listens. So he heard that. And yep. he's going to send me a text yes. message. And you're welcome, Mark, for that suggestion <laughs> as well. <laughs> All right. Let's oh. move on to our Sew and Tell segment. Last week, we asked you, what are you planning to sew for the summer? We were being all sorts of optimistic about how warm and lovely it was going to be. Right. So we got some answers, and we are going to read some. Um, the first comment comes from our show notes page from C. McCall 522 who says, I am really looking forward to making the pants from the latest issue of Sew News this summer. Woo, pack goes the pants. And I already let her know that she got bonus points for that response. Oh, absolutely. But if um, if you're listening, definitely extra bonus points um the pagosa pants sew along starts on june 3rd and um you should join us and make some pants the pattern is free the video is free and And you you watch amanda and me being kind of goofy and nervous about sewing pants yes on on camera camera. um and there's even a giveaway so you should definitely um Mm-hmm. Join us for that. It's going to be fun. Yeah, and these pants are super yeah. cute. I actually wore mine last week when the weather was nice, and they were very comfortable, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. And Amanda wore hers mm-hmm. last week, too, but it was not the same day and one of these days. It's going to happen. It's going to we'll happen. We'll wear them on the same day. Mm-hmm. And they are the same yeah, fabric. So these so. pants in person. Hmm? 
And they're very cute. Yeah, I saw these pants in person when you guys were wearing them, and they are super cute. Super cute. I really want to make them as well. Um, and we also, mm-hmm. this episode airs on May 30th, um, which means you'll right. still have a little bit of time to join the Trench Dress Sew Along, yeah. um, which we posted mm-hmm. about pretty recently in our um, Sew and Tell Pod Instagram feed. Um, but mm-hmm. I the it's such a cute dress for summer. Yeah, it's really nice. Oh, my gosh. I mean, Meghan Markle now has worn a trench dress nice. twice. And when she brought out her little baby boy, she was wearing a trench dress. And I have, she wore one like last year too, and I loved it. So it's so cute. If so if you want to look like Meghan Markle Meghan, and like Meg, royal style, and like me, yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> she called it the Meghan dress. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Uh, We also got a comment from TKing153 on Instagram, who was commenting on the bucket hats that we discussed last week. She said, yay for the bucket hat. It's super cute, easy to sew, and doesn't mess up your hair after you take it off, which is a fantastic point. That is true. Yes. I was at the mall yesterday for the holiday. Luckily, the malls are still open, just gathering inspiration. There was so many bucket hats. So cute. Interesting. Yeah. It really is a thing. Mm-hmm. I'm still in the intrigue. It, it's a thing. Intrigued. Yeah. There's actually a DIY in the um, June issue of Berta about a nice. bucket hat oh, DIY. Cute. I was flipping through it I'm today. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to read a comment from Instagram from Just Jewel Kane. And they said, just found your podcast a few weeks ago. Enjoying. Thank you. And for my summertime sojo, yes, thank you so much. Uh, And for my summertime sojo, it's my need for golf clothing. Making a muslin for quick sew three... Two, three, two, skort right now. Oh my gosh. Doesn't that sound so cute? Yeah, we had a skort recently in Sew News. By yeah, yes, I made. it's so cute. By, by me, made guys. by you, by, me, yeah. <laughs> by, by Meg. Made by me. <laughs> I know. I, when she was saying that, I was like, "Did she forget that?" No, I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, so cute. I love golf. Uh, Berta has some golf collections. Really? Uh, they're like golf themed, um, and they're super yeah. cute. I love golf fashion. So, so yeah. Nice. Somehow I saw but that. I'm I like, oh, golf, Meg so. would love that. Co- <laughs> Meg will love that comment. Yes. yes. I, I like do, that comment. I, do, I, just, I just love the mental picture. I know. Golf clothing. It's like, maybe I need some golf clothing. Mm-hmm. I don't golf, but yeah, I might I need don't the golf either. Still. <laughs> yeah, I don't golf. I I went indoor um, glow in the dark mini putt putt for Julian's 30th birthday. I don't know do if that's Do you counts. need an outfit for that? <laughs> I do a maybe. lot of mini golfing, actually. Do I need a mini golfing yes. outfit, you guys? Yes, we okay. all do. We all do. That can be our next challenge. Next time we're all together, we, we can all wear them. You know? <laughs> next time you're here, as long as it's not snowing. <laughs> oh, right. Well, at least they're indoor. Well, the glow in the dark ones yeah. are anyway. Okay. <laughs> all oh, right. Geez. So for this week's episode, we'd like to ask you, what steps do you take to sew more sustainably? Give us some ideas so we can uh, all help mm-hmm. the earth a little bit. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think just even talking about it like makes... It makes a difference. Know, I'm... Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm inspired to go, you know, dig through my stash bins again, just see what I can do instead of going to the fabric store for some upcoming. Yeah, I know. I loved it too because you're probably already doing some things Mm -hmm. that uh, that are, you know, on that on that road to to yeah being more sustainable. So awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Happy stitching. Bye. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at fwmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the sewandtell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is a production of FNW Media Studios and is produced and hosted by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. And our executive producer is Jared Mayer.